Alright guys, such a back again today. I hope you're doing better and enjoying your day so far. $4,000 Cobalt Tournament goes down last night. Scrappy's team gets the job done in the Grand Finals, reverse sweeping Draza squads to take down the W. Scrappy was talking trash with Draza as a result. Draza not so happy. But incidentally, the entire New York Subliners team played in this tournament and they went out pretty early doors and some more trash talk resulted because of this one. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. I don't know if Shotzi should be getting into a Formula 1 car anytime soon. I'm not sure that would end so well, but I do think this graphic was pretty fantastic. We know, of course, that Optic um, did that NASCAR partnership a while ago, so I thought this was a nice uh, little crossover here to mention. This also from Doug. Apparently, he's retiring at the jet ski persona. He says that after 15 years of driving jet skis around, he's now a boatman. And um, he says that, yeah, the jet ski chapter is, is closed and the boating chapter is beginning. So, yeah, Doug's looking good on this boat fantastic stuff but um yeah the dog jet ski meme is potentially coming to an end i'm sure he can't stop his love affair with jet skis but maybe it'll be back also we saw yesterday the doug hacking drama there's always drama with Doug versus Cheetahs here in the offseason. And, um, well, there's more over the last day or so. As Doug says, I'm down bad. Got hacked and in ranked play for four hours in a row. And, um, yeah, so he's going to have to regain somewhat. And this guy says, Doug, if you ever need wall hacks, Raybot, hit me up. And Doug said, what do you mean, Sunshine? And there was also this drama. So this guy, Risington, I haven't really heard of this guy before. But um, he's been going around. And Parasite basically exposes him here for cheating. For some reason, this guy, this is the issue, right? I do tend to prefer to believe players. If they say they're not cheating and there were just a few clips going around in ranked play where they might not have been, the pros are very on edge about people that might be dodgy. I tend to try and believe people and give people the benefit of the doubt. The issue is that there's some idiots that cheat and then they just swear blinds that they're not cheating and they're totally legit and then they get exposed as actually cheating and it's like well you know you put everyone in a bad name really because now everyone's going to think that people who deny it are still going to be cheating it's unfortunate so this guy who um you know plays on other accounts and his name on discord is captain aimbot and he just streams on the discord and we can quite clearly see the you know the wall hacks cheats right here I don't know if he actually put the aimbot on as well, but if you've got a cheat that's kind of showing you stuff through the wall like this, then I guess it probably does aimbot as well. I don't know. So this guy got exposed, obviously. And then I thought his reply was quite funny because he says, that's not me, first of all. Second, the source of your info is also a hacker. So it's like, well, I've got a second. He's saying that that's not me. But then he says, well, actually... Maybe it is, but actually the guy you're getting it from is also a hacker, so that kind of somehow exonerates me. I'm not really sure I buy this one. So yeah, Parasite was just saying, you're a moron, give it up. But this stuff does not seem to be going away, unfortunately. But let's talk about this Cold War tournament then. Ask Tease is saying, you know, he needs the money bad. He's got a down bad here. And seemingly the Los Angeles Grillers checks ain't hitting anymore like they used to. But yes, Black Ops Cold War tournament went down yesterday. As I said, there was meant to be a Zuma one right about now, probably actually a few days ago, but... But the sponsor wanted to do it a little bit of a different time and they're still figuring out what to do there. But still, over the last couple of weeks, the trend has been from Black Ops 3 over to Cold War. And we know that Draza, for example, since he's moved out to Atlanta, has just been playing Charles the entire time. And this is just what he loves to do. I think he prefers to do Charles than tournaments, actually. But there was a tournament with some decent money on the line with Cole Agent and that to get the job done yesterday. We know that Dashi was playing in this the other day, but um, he wasn't playing in last Last night's one, but Draza's team was. So it was Draza, Illy, JT, that being Decimate and Prolute. Pretty interesting. Not players that will be teaming together next season, we don't believe, but Prolute's always around these conversations. And uh, yeah, $4,000 Cod Agent tournament on Cold War. That happens last night. As we saw yesterday, there were two teams in this that are literally CDL rosters. Miami Heretics, well, Miami Heretics were not so sure just because Metals were sitting this one out and it was Eric Boom, Lucky, Journey and Vickle playing as a four which is pretty interesting if that's what they're planning to do going forwards they didn't make it that deep neither did the new york subliners and this is what i was most interested for now yes kismet didn't really play this game on the same level that he played the most recent ones 
would Kismet be bad at cardboard? No, and I'm sure he did play it during the cycle, but he wasn't in the Pro League at the time because Modern Warfare 19 had happened. Kismet was on Paris Legion. Then he got, you know, dropped out of there to challenges, had to grind through the next couple of years down there before he made his chance back onto the Pro League, on the New York Subliners, and the rest, of course, is history. Hydra did play in Cold War, was pretty good. Priester won an event in Cold War, right, on Minnesota Rocker somehow at the end of the season, and then Skies was on Florida that year, right, and was a pretty good player in his own right as well although it was somewhat overshadowed that season by Awakening and that's when all the conversation starts as to well you can't have Skies and Awakening on the same team. Now of course Priester is no longer here right? Sib is here instead so yesterday they played the tournament with this roster without Priester but with Sib in and you know Sib also played Cold War he I guess was grinding out on the challenger side at the time and then of course in Vanguard he finally gets his chance in the Pro League on the Seattle Surge. So they played yesterday with their new squad and you would expect given the pedigree of these guys and the fact that it's the world championship winning team with the change they've made they would do pretty well now like i think it was mainly search and destroy only i think there was some hard point going around here so you know and it's the same thing really with this new optic texas team they played the ghost throwback the other day in the grand scheme of things yes you can hear they're listening and their comms and stuff and maybe read into that what you like but it doesn't really matter that much, right? I mean, it's a Ghost Throwback tournament. As soon as the game launches here for MW3, it's going to be a different story. But still, I did think that compared to some of the S&D grinders, we might potentially get some sort of, you know, I thought subliners might mix it up. They might make the finals or they might make it pretty deep because it is the team that just won the World Championship with one change and a team that you'd expect to make it deep in a situation like this. But actually, they didn't make it that far at all. Unfortunately, the bracket page on the website is like giving me an error, so I can't exactly see where they placed, but I believe they did lose to this team of Furious and Co. So Furious is um, UK, he's a Scottish, I believe, challenger player. And I imagine he's playing off some pretty heavy ping here, but he actually gets um, some nice kills. I mean, that was on Hydra, shoots Hydra's body, and then gets the final kill of the round as well to close it out after his teammates um, get the third one. So, well, actually, no, he get the third and then the teammates got the fourth kill. But um, yeah, so a bit of drama here, really, because he tweeted out this nice little clip, and then we get some replies. So Kizma comes through and says, three years later, after this game, look at me, you know, like, what have you achieved, type thing. Here is my MVP trophy. Well done, you've got your nice little Twitter clip on us. But um, yeah, I'm the one here with the World Championship ring and the MVP trophy for the World Championship. So yeah, I thought it was interesting. I mean, yeah, good response, of course. I mean, you can't really... What are you meant to do when someone's a world champion and they decide to come back against you? But at the end of the day, I think maybe people expected subliners to go a little bit deeper in this tournament. And, you know, we then get Harry who says, get a visa, please. And uh, then obviously Furious is also like, I haven't even come on the controller lately and I'm still smoking these guys. So then Sib responds, LMAO, please make the league Furious lives. I just love Sib's tweets. They're just so funny the way that he does them. Face like, you're terrible, brother. Get in the league, Sunshine, actually win something in real life, Sunshine, and maybe we can talk. But we can see from Sim's profile that um, they played in the tournaments like 10 hours ago. He tweeted up there playing it, at least as a recording. And then eight hours ago, a couple of hours later, they were looking for Charles. So they didn't last in the tournament that long, especially given that it was hours after this, hours later, where the tournament actually concluded. And there was some talk from Sim about why they aren't playing Hardpoint. And I think they could have done if both teams agreed. But um, I guess some letters weren't so happy with the way this was going but nonetheless I think people expected them to maybe make it a little bit deeper as the world championship winning team and their first outing as a new team of four has not necessarily gone to plan but of course it's not in the game we're going to play going forwards and the early S&D tournaments when the game launches are probably going to be more influential in terms of how the season might go now this was disgusting by the way this guy I know that Doug responded to this as well and said you know, you deserve a franchise team for this. Look at this kill that Purge gets. Absolutely spins on Jintroid there. Actually, that was on Pacer. The first kill was on Jintroid. But then he goes on to complete this one versus four in a ridiculous way because they actually double challenge him and he still gets both kills. I mean, outrageous stuff. So Purge was on the team with, and that was against like Nero and um, yeah, pretty good team actually. We can see yeah, Nero, Kush, Jintroid and Pacer. So yeah, Purge with TJ Halley, Scrap and Johnny. That was the team of four. And they ended up making the grand finals 
finals and winning the entire thing. Now, they went down 2-0 in this grand finals, I believe. I think they were doing a best of five. And it was 2-0 down for Scrappy's team in the grand finals of this tournament to Draza's team that also made the finals. And if Draza's team won, they would have forced a bracket reset to go again for another best of five. So I think it was a double best of five grand finals. And that would have taken these guys seriously late into the night. But um, thankfully for Scrappy and Co, they clutched up, they reverse swept Draza's team and yeah definitely over the last few rounds you could tell they lost fully a little bit they weren't playing particularly coherently and yeah Scrappy says GG's they just broke down completely and they take down the dub for pretty much 4k between them I think one's gonna be tops one I'm close mid I'm close mid we like front yo he's 8 on 8 20 20 no one in their barrel no one in their barrel go on me I'm pitching 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 in the cube Open hold on our pinch, I'm holding our pinch. Shit on, shit on. Okay, oh, I'm going to be flank, he has a flank. Enemies down like, to the enemy's down 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 to the that's a reverse sweep, bro. Two times in a row. I mean, well, not two times in a row, bro. I like that, man. Sweet, Let's fucking go, bro. Dude, if I would have played this for fucking two hundred dollars, bro, bro. <laughs> nah, you're tripping. You'll never be. You always would never play this again. <laughs> So a good tournament, it certainly went late, but um, you know, that's how these tournaments go. And congrats to these boys, including Purge, for getting the job done. Because, yeah, definitely a name that will be going around for next season's challenger side after a pretty good season last year as well. Scrap TJ, we know about them. Johnny as well, who was, let's not forget, on that Paris Legion team with Jimbo back at the end of the Call of Duty Vanguard season. But um, yeah, the funny thing is about this to me is that immediately as soon as this tournament concluded, Draza was talking about, like, let me get some chals. You know, like, I can't be bothered with this tournament. And at this point, for him in Atlanta, it was 4 a.m. maybe, maybe 3 a.m., maybe 4 a.m., something like that. It ended quite late. Well, maybe late for a regular person, but for these COD pros, apparently not, because, uh, yeah, Draza finishes up playing this challenge and decides, all right, let me get or this tournament, then says, all right, let me get some chals in to finish off the night when it's already, like, 4 a.m. So, got to respect the level of grind out of that guy. But, um, of course, yeah, they made it all the way to the finals. They fell short, and Scrappy's team gets the victory in a pretty dramatic manner. Just a couple of things to close out with I thought were quite fascinating here from Brian Stantz. The highest team KD in a grand final series. So, these are the top 10 and quite remarkably we'll come back to this in a second there's actually no complexity here complexity during their dominant run the highest kd they had as a team kd was a 1.16 which is not maybe a massive surprise just because the way they plays was so perfect really they didn't need to drop crazy team kds usually it'd be like karma and aches that would drop the big numbers crim six as well tp would be doing the objective work so it was a team kd they were never like insane or to be fair back then a team kd of like a 1.15 1.2 was really good nowadays it's a slightly different story when you can actually have some pretty insane tkds in these uh, grad files i mean Definitely, I was immediately. I was thinking Paris 2017 when Optic destroyed FaZe in the grand finals after the Just Dance drama because the grand finals was delayed because they had a Just Dance tournament on the main stage. Classic <laughs> pre franchise cards. The highest ever is ESWC the year before in 2016 when Optic, for some reason, Optic, to be fair, it was Crim. Every time we went to the ESWC event, he would always win. So he had a 1.38. Envy at stage three playoffs 2014 and a 1.33 overall. This is kind of insane as well. That's Subliners got to third. I mean, obviously, we know that Kizan's was it Kizan Skies or whoever it was had a 1.5 in the finals. So, as a team, they had a 1.33 there. And yeah, top 10 is a 1.18 with Optic, obviously, ESWC 2015, where they also won because Crim6 was there. And as I say, like he has a crazy record in France, in Paris, and maybe we'll go back there at some point. I was just thinking as well, so many of these had formal in because formal was on like all of these Optic ones, pretty much. Okay, maybe not Vegas. 2019 but most of these optic ones formal was on and then he was also on NVG Affinity 3 and I'm guessing he was on NV Stage 3 Plus 2014 as well so yeah not too bad very much interested in your thoughts in the comments below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new take care and I'll see you next time